I sired this hair, baby. <laughs> oh my god, I'm filming with an actual human being. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a friend with me. This is like a moment in history because this literally never happens. I don't know if you've noticed, but I never have my friends in videos. So this is pretty monumental. This is my friend Taya. Hi. I used to dance with her and we have so many memories together. Oh yeah. We've been friends for a long time. A long time. We've basically grown up together. She is the older sister that I never had, but always wanted. We have our festive, these are Christmas Moscow mule. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's not too sweet. No, it's like yeah. really herbal. Mm -hmm. And I like that about a drink. It made me salivate so much. My mouth is like, <laughs> my taste buds have just like activated. <laughs> So I asked you guys on my Instagram to put in your questions or topics that you wanted me to discuss in this video. And yeah, let's start with like a lighthearted one. Embarrassing period stories. Oh God. I have a really good one. Okay, and it is start. kind of tragic because it was very recent. Oh no. <laughs> it was very recent. Oh sweetie. I haven't even told you about this. Oh shit, that's like, yeah, that's really recent. I just had my first relationship and one night I was over at his apartment and his apartment complex has a pool. Excellent start. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent start. We went down to the pool, we're just goofing around like literally with flippers on, <laughs> like dolphins going, <laughs> like swimming around the pool. Oh my God. And as, some of you may know sometimes when you're in water your period just stops so i was kind of thinking like whatever like i'm good but the thing is we got out of the pool and we were like having a pool noodle fight and all of a sudden he turns to me and he's like you have blood all down your leg oh my god it was a full stream all down my leg oh dear yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah that's not that's yeah. not fun. That's not a fun discovery. Yeah. I got my period really young. I was only 10. That is young. Yeah, I was really young. So like, obviously you always have those moments in ballet where you're like, your teacher's just like, I can see like your, oh, your pad. Cause that I was, was so such young. A thing. That was such a thing. It was. Cause I was so young. I couldn't wear a tampon. You can't wear a yeah. tampon when you're like 10 years old. Yeah. I couldn't wear one time. <laughs> 16. <laughs> but that's another really? story. That's another story anyway. Yeah. Nothing is worse than yeah. wearing a ballet on your period. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. So basically anytime you're on your period. Literally dance. just that was the embarrassing period story. <laughs> Any class with Ellen where I was on my period, I was like, I just want to go. Yeah. I think we probably talked about this at the time. I was like, definitely. Send me home, please. <laughs> don't. No, honestly, now that I think about it, I totally remember us having conversations and venting about our cycles. And actually, yeah. there was a funny story. We went on a company trip. This was actually after a whole lot of chaos, oh, which is literally that could be a story time in and of mm -hmm. itself. If I could and it's bring also myself to relive it. <laughs> I, was, I was literally just going to say that <laughs> partially why we're so close because nothing will bring you closer no. than shared trauma. No. My therapist could tell everyone. <laughs> Aside from the two girls that were younger than us who hadn't gotten their periods yet, everyone else in the group, including our dance teacher, we were all synced. Yeah. So one morning on the trip, we all woke up and we slowly admitted to each other, like, I just started my period yeah. today. And then the other person would just be like, same. Because yeah. <laughs> you're spending, like, you're rehearsing, like, every day. Yeah. And then we were on this trip, you, sorry, you totally sync up, like, it's, yeah. it's, it's just a big thing. And it, yeah. Honestly, like, how does that even happen, you know? I don't know the science behind it. I don't truthfully know that science knows the reason behind it. Um, blame the moon? I don't know. Yeah, blame the moon. But, like, also, it's so nice because I can't imagine going through that alone. It's so nice to sync up with people mm -hmm. and, like, go through it together. <laughs> This is like so tart. I'm like, mm. every time I take a sip, I like it. I like it too. It's really good. I'm gonna make this again. Oh, this is super. Yeah, good. I drink this as like my morning snack. <laughs> a lot of you asked about body image and specifically like dealing with insecurities around your body or or just like in general asking how to be more confident. So I feel like both of us have gone through it because of dance. Yeah. Oh, you're predisposed yeah. to body image issues. As soon as you get put in those those baby yeah. ballet lessons, you're in for it, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was hard. It was a journey. I definitely struggled for a good few years, mm -hmm. like especially ages like 13 to honestly 17. Mm -hmm. 
I really struggled and it was something that I just didn't talk about. Mm -hmm. I would say, honestly, my biggest thing that I've learned is being a teenager is so hard and so awkward. And now that I'm an adult, like I'm almost 22. Mm -hmm. So you're like nearing full brain development. You're out of high school. You're sort of like in the real world a little bit and you really realize like, wow, it's so awkward and constrained and everything changes and it's so hard. Like I never want to forget, especially like when I have my own children, I never want to forget how hard it was being a teenager. Yeah. Because like you said, those 13 to 17, you're so just hard. critical. Yeah. And your body isn't your body. Like this yeah. body I have now is not what I looked like when I was 13 yeah. or 17. Everyone has that challenging spot. Yeah. When you hit what your adult body looks like, people struggle with it because you're used to looking mm -hmm. like a child mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you don't and so you have these problems with yourself. Like I know I definitely did, but now as an adult, I'm like, I actually have a very normal body. i oh, sorry, mm -hmm. everybody, it's a normal body, but like you're yeah. going, okay, you know what? I don't feel like I'm on a stage because it's so, everything I do is so awkward yeah. all the time. Yeah. I feel like the biggest thing that helped me was just realizing like there is literally no changing it. Like my body mm -hmm. is my body and every single body is different. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in me stressing about it because half the time, actually literally all of the time, nobody notices the things that you're insecure about. If I always look at you and I'm like, dude, you no, not applicable. <laughs> like I notice. It's literally, <laughs> you're good. it's literally always so in your head. Oh, totally. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I feel like as soon as you can just like radically accept that fact, even mm -hmm. if you still deal with insecurities of course i sometimes i'm like i take a photo and i'm like mm, we'll be taking another one but as soon as you can just like more or less accept things exactly as they are you're gonna get so much more confident i try to picture myself at all ages like i do this all the time i try to picture me at all ages and stages of my life mm -hmm. because i'm not just myself as a 21 year old woman and myself and i have also always been five and ten and fifteen yeah. and like I try to picture my future self and so it's so you find it so hard to critique a body that was once a five-year-old girl who just loved to dance yeah and it's so i think that looking at yourself that way gives you back your personhood and it shows you what you use your body for you appreciate the things your body can yeah. do rather than the way that it looks because the thing is no matter how you look you will always find something to not like it's so much about not necessarily the thought itself, um, but the energy that you put behind it. Like if you really just pour all of your energy, all of your focus into this thought about yourself that's negative and, mm. you know, putting down a certain aspect of your body, like... It'll take root. It'll, it'll live there. Yeah. And also like that just, it brings your awareness directly to it and you're just not gonna be able to let it go. Whereas if you can like, you know, just let the thought come and immediately go and put no energy into it. And yeah. that's gonna definitely help you kind of rewire your oh, brain. Totally. You yeah. literally have to not give those thoughts any merit. Yeah. I'll be like, that did not just yeah. happen. And also, sorry, actually as an archeology span student, I feel like I have a very unique perspective on things. And mm -hmm. then my professors always try to tell us, which is very kind of them actually, they always try to tell us that like you are who you are because everyone in your lineage survived for millions and millions and millions of years i have this now is because my ancestors needed to heat the air up before it hit their lungs so they wouldn't get cold yeah if you got yeah. a really flat nose you needed protection from sand going straight up your nostrils you know that's fascinating. It is. So yeah. you have to think your body is yeah. this way because of a purpose. Mm -hmm. Like I have light skin because my ancestors needed to absorb more vitamin D. Oh well. Yeah. If I think I look pale, that's kind of a kick in the face to all of them <laughs> who are like fighting tooth and nail to survive. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so true. <gasps> Jesus! Oh no! no. Oh no! <laughs> like literally sent me into orbit <laughs> no me too as dramatic as that sounds <laughs> you can't see this in the shop but just know there's <laughs> it's all my fault there is like a smoking <laughs> there's like a whole box of baking soda on the ground <laughs> <laughs> we have made a sand pit <laughs> pretty much it's gonna play in it later just build a little castle i'll do an excavation yeah. advice for first relationships 
it is so exciting to have your first kiss and everything like that but make sure you're also really nurturing your connection with the person i would say you should know your own intentions and you should mm -hmm. be completely aware of the other person so yeah. you should both know like what you want out of it and that's mm -hmm. the same thing because mm -hmm. like if, if you even if you're 16 sorry lots of people marry their high school sweethearts but if you want to get married and the other person doesn't that's a really 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 big yeah. difference. Yeah. Like you need to understand that you want the same things and that you both mm -hmm. know what each other wants. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself if you need totally. to because everyone is still navigating boundaries and depending on whether or not your partner has experience or not, that could also change things. Mm -hmm. If you are feeling a certain way, vocalize it because mm -hmm. it's important. Mm -hmm. This is actually something I was thinking about earlier and like the most important thing you can practice for yourself is setting boundaries. It might be like uncomfortable for 10 seconds, but mm. after that, like you, you absolutely need to make sure you vocalize your comfort. And of course we should do things that make us uncomfortable. Like it's never good to like stay in your comfort zone, Yeah. but like, you know, trust that gut yeah. feeling when yeah. you don't feel okay about something, you need to say, hey, mm -hmm. pause, Yeah. Hey, no. Oh, this one. I'm scared that someday my boyfriend will leave me. Any mm. advice? Oh man, that's so, I feel like that's so relevant mm -hmm. because I recently sort of had a situation with someone where they were, and I'm not sure if this is the situation, they were a little bit flaky and I knew deep down that they would probably leave one day and I was so terrified. The biggest thing that helped me was realizing like what life might look like without that person. Like you need to go, what do I have without them? Like I still have friendships. Mm -hmm. um, I still have a good relationship with my family. And even if you don't, strong friendships are always, so always so important. And if, if you find yourself in a relationship where you don't, you're not able to keep strong friendships, it's a bit of a red flag. And I'm not necessarily saying you should break up with the person, but reconnecting with your friends mm -hmm. or making new ones is very important. Yeah. Um, you need to have individual support systems mm -hmm. and then, you know, obviously you support each other. Yeah, yeah, definitely having just such a clear idea of your own self, mm -hmm. like knowing your interests, identity. your your own identity, like what makes you happy, what makes you sad, just being so aware of yourself and all the amazing qualities that you have. Mm -hmm what you're bringing to the relationship because I feel like that's where a lot of people can kind of um, start to feel that way like oh my gosh what if my partner leaves me like you have to remember like it is a blessing in this person's life that they are with you mm -hmm. you are bringing so much to the table um, as I'm sure they are bringing a lot to the table as well but just like remembering your worth and realizing how amazing it is that this person has you and yeah also just realizing like even if everything changes, someone that is even more aligned will likely come into your life. And that is going to be ultimately what's meant to happen. If it is, if, his, uh, if the future pans out like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also just knowing like regardless, you're going to be totally okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to hurt, but you're going to be okay because you're strong. Mm -hmm. And so much growth happens in those moments. Mm -hmm. Advice for dealing with burnout. This is something <laughs> that I know so well. Honestly, the best thing to do, get yourself time. Because it is the only thing that helps. You need to give yourself time to miss the thing that has burned you out. That's a really good point, yeah. Yeah. Especially for like creative burnout, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. On my end, like I deal with obviously school. I'm in mm -hmm. university full time and I have a job. So um, definitely I am tired a lot of the time. I just come home and I'm like, yeah. Um, so she's, I, she's living like multiple different lives <laughs> at once. Yeah. Well, I will repeat what my therapist does, which is to actively take care of yourself instead of just viewing certain tasks like necessary like I always try and like really like baby myself almost like if mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time because it's like exams I'll be like you know what I just need to like buy breakfast today because I can't wake up a little bit earlier and make mm -hmm. it. like it's okay to make allowances and like it's not a failure if you are you can't go to the gym one day because you have to like finish something for school or you really just need to like take a break before you study yeah like it's okay to let things lapse 
because mm -hmm. it it just happens because either you let those things lapse or you will like break down getting over a breakup have you ever been broken up with no uh, it's not, I'm sorry, that sounds really insensitive. I I feel like your tolerance for things is really low. <laughs> it's really low. No, but that's a good thing because you have like the strength and like bravery, honestly, to put your foot down immediately. Like you will take no shit from anyone. <laughs> anyone. Which is true. Yeah. But also I would say when I was younger, I would date people because they were interested in me and not necessarily so much that I was interested in them. Um, I think I really wanted to be validated a lot. Like it, I, you know, I've struggled with that through your life. Ballet does not provide validation in any sense. Oh um, and you know, that sort of thing can be really like, you can really just like latch onto anyone that sort of shows you a little bit of attention. Mm -hmm. And that was like definitely my younger years. Um, although, sorry, I had good relationships that I like was very in love in, but even my first boyfriend, we dated for two years and I really loved him. Like, sorry, we mm -hmm. were friends and yeah. like we were very much together, but his behavior changed and I didn't like it. And it ended things and honestly, I never really even cried about that. I cried once at competition. Actually, this is a hilarious I story. That. I had not cried at all. I broke up with this boy I've been dating for like two years and everyone was like walking on eggshells a bit like, oh my gosh, she she's gonna be a mess. And I was like, we're good, it's competition, I'm business. Mm -hmm. Until uh, one of our instructors was literally putting on my, gluing on my eyelashes. Oh my the worst time to cry. Yeah. Literally. And she goes, how's your boyfriend? And I was like, Brittany. <laughs> and she goes, oh my God, stop. Stop crying, stop crying. Have a good cry. Watch a movie, like a comfort movie or a comfort show mm -hmm. with your favorite treat of some sort or favorite snack. I had an entire pint of vegan mint chip ice cream Necessary. and a glass of white wine. And I literally called my friends every single night, every single night. But yeah, just allowing yourself to go through any emotions that come up, mm -hmm. don't shy away from them, go head first into them because that's how you process it. Do not talk to them because every time you talk to them, you move your progress back mm -hmm. to the start. Yeah. In like board game, like go mm -hmm. go back to start, literally. Yeah. Every time you talk to them, do not mm -hmm. talk to them. Talk to your yeah. friends. Definitely leaning on other people. And mm -hmm. I know sometimes it sucks because you feel like the only person that can make you feel better is the person that did the hurting, but it's not their responsibility to also heal you because ultimately they can't, they're only gonna hurt you more. Mm -hmm. You gotta know that it is so hard right now and that's okay, it's so valid. It will be really rough, mm -hmm. but you'll get through it and, and, and you'll look back mm -hmm. and go, oh my gosh, like I am totally fine. I thought I would literally never live again the same way, mm -hmm. but I'm good. Yeah. Better even sometimes. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to your younger self? I think about this all the time, actually. That's good. I do think about this yeah. all the time. Um, go to therapy. God, go to therapy. Um, <laughs> if this is to anybody, mm -hmm. if you can afford it, go. Find someone that you really connect with, a therapist that really understands you and like it what is totally like changing my therapist is absolutely so necessary for like me maintaining stasis in my life. Because it teaches mm -hmm. you tools too to like manage your own emotional experience. Yeah. Because life is so emotional. Do not compromise your boundaries. Don't for anybody. Mm -hmm. If someone yeah. if someone tries to push you, if someone tries to like change the way that you think and change what you feel comfortable with, like that's not good. Mm -hmm. And like with that comes trust your gut. Always trust your gut. I have trusted myself through so many things, and I'm always right. So yeah, <laughs> honestly, yeah, I am always right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. But also, like, I know personally, anytime I go against my intuition, that's when things go wrong. That's always when things go and wrong. And if I'm being totally honest, and I have not vocalized this at all yet, I kind of had a gut feeling in my last relationship. And I will now reveal on camera that I never liked him, and I was just putting up with it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching, On standby. The more I learn about evolution, the more I really want to go figure out how to time travel. And like the first little fish that steps foot on land. No. <laughs> you thought. <laughs> Jesus Christ, sorry. Oh, oh my God, my whole spine is like cracked.
Is it this mattress good? Yeah. But you know when you lie down and your whole spine's like all the way up? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Multiple times a day. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Keep them eyes. Oh. That was yeah, that wow. No, I heard that. That reverberated. I didn't want to eat that word, but I did. Okay, tampons, pads, menstrual cup, etc. What do you think is the best option? I can't wait to see the video. I can't wait for you to see the video. I'm so excited about this. We've been excited. Yeah. Like, nervous. Excited. <laughs> nervous. Nervous, but very excited. Okay. What's your experience? Um, honestly, I feel like I would be a menstrual cup user if I got a period, but because I have an IUD, right. I don't even bleed. Like, mm -hmm. um, which is super convenient because talk about zero waste. Talk yeah. about <laughs> zero problems. Mm -hmm. um, how, how was how was insertion? That um, I mean, it was painful because gynecology is medieval. Yeah. But find a doctor that will provide you pain medication if that's an avenue that you would like. Um, otherwise, like I took pain medication mm -hmm. before, how they advise, and then you have like two days of a nightmare. But then I've been totally good for like a year. And two whatever. days of a nightmare. Yeah. Like just bad cramps. Just terrible cramps. You just oh. don't want to move. But before that, mm -hmm. pads to sleep because I don't sleep in like um what what are they called like thong underwear. I sleep oh in yeah, like full coverage. Mm -hmm. So pads um and tampons like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. menstrual cups till the day I die. They're literally the best things ever. They don't have the discomfort of tampons. I feel like, especially towards the end of your period, using tampons, mm -hmm. it just sucks. It's terrible. It's so like, just yeah. feeling it being very dry towards oh. the end. It feels like hurts. a lot of cotton shoved up your vagina. Which is exactly <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to think about So that. uncomfortable. <laughs> and even like with the super like light flow tampons, yeah. it's still you get that feeling. Mm -hmm. But with the cup, you don't. It literally feels the exact same every single time. And it's it's a little bit finicky to get in when you're first learning how to do like the different punch folds and everything. But once you just like master getting it in there, you're set. What is something that you look for in a relationship? And I know you have a lot of opinions with this. So I have a lot of her opinions. Always say I really just want to find my equal. Like I want to find someone who is kind like I am and attractive like I am and smart like I am. And I think that's a good way to look at relationships mm -hmm. because you're building yourself up. You're also analyzing what you bring to the table and what you value in a person. Mm -hmm. Someone who is very confident and very comfortable mm -hmm. in themselves, but also who puts you first. Because a relationship is putting the other person first ahead of yourself every time. And it works mm -hmm. when both people do that consistently because otherwise if you're putting them first and yeah. they aren't, mm -hmm. then there's that imbalance. So you want someone who views you and respects you and love you so much that they mm -hmm. put you first and they trust that you will put them first mm -hmm. too. Yeah, just like having respect for each other and also just other people. Like if you notice that they are very disrespectful to others, it is definitely a telltale sign that that's maybe not a person that you want mm -hmm. to be around. Mm -hmm. um yeah another good piece of advice is if you couldn't if you wouldn't want your child and even if you don't want children mm -hmm. but just think this way you, if you wouldn't want a child exactly the same as the partner that you're dating like if you wouldn't be proud of that child if you wouldn't like be really happy with the way that they've turned out you should probably yeah. not <laughs> Especially if you want yeah. children because they will probably yeah. end up like their other parent. Definitely like the basics, honesty, transparency, oh. compassion, yeah. empathy, like all of those good things. Like those are so essential. Good communication, mm -hmm. um, knowing each other's love languages as well is super important. My love language is physical touch, but my last person that I was with, his love language was not really physical touch. Mm -hmm. So like I would always want to like hold hands and hug and like that was just simply not the way that he showed his affection He was definitely more of like a, <laughs> a loser <laughs> Someone needs to put in that mm -hmm. effort for you. Yeah, they need to do things that will make you happy And yeah. they should notice things that you like and like actively do them. It's not too yeah. much to ask. For, yeah for you to be noticed <laughs> Yeah, yeah Honestly, like you should feel like the luckiest person That's in the true. world being with your person. And if you don't, then that other relationship will come later. Yeah. Have you ever questioned your sexuality? I was also asked, do you ever see yourself dating girls anytime in the future? I, I mean, I feel like honestly, 
honestly with the way that the media is right now like obviously sexuality is a conversation that's talked about a lot and i love that for the queer community i'm a huge supporter and ally of the queer community i grew up watching drag race so of course like naturally just being surrounded by a lot of queer culture and everything it's of course crossed my mind i'm like hmm, would i and honestly i feel like i i haven't had like a big moment but i've definitely experienced attraction to people that aren't men i think i don't know how much i want to elaborate because it's not entirely something that i fully understand um right now i know that i am interested in dating men which i know is sometimes a bit of a rocky journey <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault though Theirs. Yes, let's put let's be clear. It's, yeah. that it's not your fault. It's theirs <laughs> Right now. I would say I'm straight but like maybe a little fruity Maybe a little <laughs> fruity deep down. Do you want to touch on this? I came out really young uh, I came out to my parents when I was I don't know probably like 15 ish mm -hmm. um, And I come from a religious family like my family it, our relationship with religion is is complicated now but um, I was raised very Christian and so I think it was Especially with me being so young, you get typical questions from people like, well, how do you know? Or like, I never saw you this way. Like, you never say, you never express it. Um, that sort of stuff. So it, it's really easy to like be discouraged mm -hmm. because everyone's like trying to convince you mm -hmm. that you're not. Um, Especially when you are very like, um, like, I guess, straight presenting. Yeah, like you haven't necessarily adopted the very kind of stereotypical like identity or like aesthetic of someone that's queer. Mm -hmm. So that probably was another layer. Uh -huh. And like I date men, so that's how things mm -hmm. so things oftentimes when people are queer but they still um, have like straight relationships. That's where a lot of like questioning yeah. and confusion comes in. But honestly, all I can say is like, you don't ever need to put a label on yourself. You don't ever need to pressure yourself one way or another. But would, would you say that you were very certain? Like as soon as that idea crossed your mind, you were like, yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. When I was a little girl, we had a book about Aladdin and everyone knows about how beautiful Princess Jasmine is. She's just beautiful mm -hmm. and we love her. And she has a pet tiger, which is like so sick, dude. Uh, as a kid, I was like, this is the best. You're a princess with a tiger. What more could mm -hmm. I want? And then she put that red outfit on. <laughs> Not to be gross, but man, did it make me feel like I had to pee. If you have to like fight with yourself about whether you're gay or not, you're probably at least like a little bit gay because yeah. straight people don't mm -hmm. look up am I gay quiz. <laughs> um, people, straight people don't do that. So like, yes, I mm -hmm. knew from a young age because I was like, you know, things just aren't adding up. I don't, yeah. I'm not like those other girls that just like guys and that's mm -hmm. okay. And I was really blessed to have, even though I went to a really small school, everyone was like super accepting of it. Mm -hmm. um, and if they weren't, I probably would have punched them in the no, just kidding, we can't say that. They probably went out of voice there because I made people nervous yeah. in high school. If you did enjoy this video and maybe would want to see more videos like this, I feel like we could definitely get more of my friend group involved. Definitely let me know by giving it a thumbs up, commenting down below. Also, make sure to subscribe while you're at it to join the community. Thank you, by the way, for 2,300 subscribers. That's that's, crazy. that's really cool. Yeah. She literally, I mean, you've known me since the very beginning, since oh, I had yeah. zero. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty Probably sure you're number one. Or maybe your mom's number one. Yeah. Number my mom was number one. You were number two, and then my dad was number three. So you oh. beat him to that game. I'm your dad now. I <laughs> sired this air, baby. <laughs> Anyway, here's my Instagram and TikTok if you would like to see more content from me. And until next time, I will talk to you in my next video. <laughs> Don't contact me. <coughs> Anybody. <laughs> Genevieve has my number. <laughs> <laughs> that could be revoked at any time. <laughs> I thought you meant like if somebody hits me up like, hey, I want to date your friend. <laughs> oh no, God, I meant it she's on probation. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>